good morning. It's so good to see all of you in the room here on campus and also at home. It's hard for me to say this, uh, being a pastor of 32 years, uh, but if you've got fever or you're not feeling well, thank you for staying at home. <laughs> uh, uh, we had a funny moment this past week. We were traveling to Austin, Texas for a, a family wedding. And uh, as I was there, I'm getting some Texas hay fever. You know how that happens, Paul? And uh, I sneezed, and it was like the parting of the Red Sea. I mean, everybody moved. Uh, but seriously, we're so grateful uh, that we can join together as God's people uh, worshiping the Lord. And uh, we want you to know that here at Roswell Street, uh, this is a no condemnation zone. Uh, whether you feel great about worshiping in a room with other believers uh, at safe distances and all the protocols that we have in place or whether uh, for love of your uh, loved ones that you're staying at home, uh, we want you to know that you belong here. I want to op ask you to open up your Bible where it just falls open, uh, the book of Psalms. We've been in the book of Psalms for the last couple of months uh, where we're experiencing together growing deeper in this love with the Lord. Uh, we're looking in Psalm chapter 107. It was interesting, <clears throat> the U version Bible verse for the day was Psalm 107 verse 1 uh, that we'll be speaking from today. Uh, we're uh, reading two chapters of the book of Psalms daily. And we're just seeking to grow deeper in our love for the Lord by learning how the psalmist did it. Uh, Athanasius uh, said in his writings of old, a church father, uh, he said that the Bible speaks to us, but the psalms speak for us. And that just as we just pray these uh, psalms, it uh, leads our hearts into a deeper relationship. And today, uh, we're going to be looking at how to grow deeper in love with the Lord by cultivating a heart of gratitude. You see, it's the idea that gratitude is not just one time that you do it and you're done, uh, but it's something that we have to cultivate. In other words, it's a heart that grows inside of us. So Psalm 107, you'll notice that there are uh, 43 verses, uh, but we're going to read the first nine verses to tune our hearts uh, in gratitude. I'm going to invite you, if you will, to stand with me as we read aloud the Word of God. If you're at home, read aloud with us uh, the Word of God. You'll see it up on the IMAG screen. And let's make this our prayer today. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that he has redeemed them from the power of the foe and has gathered them from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Some wandered in the desolate wilderness, finding no way to a city where they could live. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits failed within them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He rescued them from their distress. He led them to the right path to go to a city where they could live. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all humanity. For he has satisfied the thirsty and filled the hungry with good things. Father, we pray this morning that you would lead our hearts in a greater capacity to give thanks. Expand our hearts for gratitude. Fill us with your joy. For we humbly pray in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. I uh, do want to say uh, greetings to Milo and Renee Watkins. We're praying for you. We know that you have the COVID virus and we're praying for healing. And also for John and I know Bambi's by your side at home and we're praying for you and your recovery. We just love our church family. And in the spirit of uh, Psalm 106 verse 48, let all of God's people say amen and hallelujah is what the Bible says. Okay, let's do that together. And all of God's people said and 
Yeah, that's right. We want to make sure that we're doing the Word of God. Now, you say, Pastor, why is it so important for us to uh, show gratitude? I mean, all the way through this psalm, you find it, let, let God's people give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. Why is that? Notice up on the screen, gratitude changes me. It changes me. When we simply do the Word of God, there are some good things that come out of that. And notice these eight outcomes uh, that happened through research. It has shown uh, that this happens in our life. People who are grateful are content. They live life in the present. People who are grateful enjoy life. They're focused more on the positive than on the negative. God is not glorified by a grumbling saint. Do you realize that? And being humble. People who give thanks think of others. They, uh, people who give thanks are forgiving. They do so easily and often. They're patient. They seize life in the moment. Uh, they're mindful. They remember the Lord's goodness. They're generous, having freely received from the Lord. They are often freely giving, and they're trusting and the Father of lights for good gifts. Now, when you look at those eight benefits of giving thanks, which one of those do you want more of in your life? Come on now, we could be real. Which one of these do you want more of in your life? I would say I want to be patient. My wife down here on the front row is saying amen. Uh, I, I want to live right now, here and now, the full and abundant life and just be more patient, not l less driven by a clock and more driven by God's Spirit uh, within my life. Let's just pray today that, that God in this moment will allow the needle to move in our hearts. Allow God to, to expand this capacity of giving thank, thanks to the Lord uh, so that we can be changed. So uh, uh, let's actually do the book. We're just simply with your Bibles open, Psalm 107. We're just going to do two verses of the Bible. A lot of times... Uh, in, in our Bible studies, we try to make things way too complex, too complicated. But God wants us to have a pure and sincere devotion to Jesus, 2 Corinthians 11.3. He wants us to have that uh, within our life. So we're going to just do two simple Bible verses. Now let me ask you, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? I don't know about you, but things have changed around the Lewis household. We're we're making adaptations and change of plans uh, for my aging parents and how we're going to gather and all those type of things. What are you going to be doing? Well, the outcome of this sermon is to make whether you celebrate Thanksgiving through a phone call or virtually or in person, uh, I'm going to give you a challenge today from the Word of God that will make your Thanksgiving filled full of Jesus. Do you want that? Okay. So let's, uh, let's engage, let's lean in together. So uh, let's make it uh, very clear today. Jot these two statements down. If you've got your listening notes, printed those off online, uh, you can find them there. But first of all, jot this down. Verse 1, we need to remember the Lord's love. And then in verse 2, we need to repeat the Lord's love. That's the two things we're going to learn today. To cultivate gratitude in our heart. First thing that we need to do is remember the Lord's love. Now notice in verse 1 it says, give thanks to the Lord. Now how do, you, how do you give thanks to the Lord? It begins with a heart that stops what you're doing and remembers what God has done in the past. Just pause and reflect upon what God has done in the past. Gratitude is the opposite of entitlement. Entitlement is self-demanding. I deserve this. I, I want this. I, I'm entitled to this. And listen to this statement. Entitled people destroy themselves. Gratitude is the opposite of that. It is giving thanks to God, giving thanks to others in your life, giving thanks for the provisions that are brought about in your life. So let's uh, decrease entitlement, let's increase gratitude, and how do we do that? First of all, remember, remember what? Remember who the Lord is to you. Remember who the Lord is to you. Look in verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is what? All right, are you with me this morning? I hear you. I see you up in the balcony. You got a good, uh, good cloud of witnesses up in the balcony this morning. Great to see you, Alan and Lori. And uh, uh, so the Lord is, give thanks to the Lord for he is what? Good. Now, what does good mean? Good uh, simply speaks of being without defect, 
being without fault, being without uh, failing. Do you realize only God is good? <laughs> only God is holy, holy, holy. Remember uh, this, uh, the account of the rich young ruler coming to Jesus and uh, he said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said what? Why do you call me good? There's only one good and that is God. In other words, Jesus was asking, are you calling me God? If so, you're right. <laughs> I'm God in a bod. I'm God in the flesh uh, doing that. You see, God is what? Good. He is good. And uh, it's what we taught our children to pray before we would eat a meal. God is good and God is great. Let us thank him for our meal. You see, he says also in verse 1, notice again, uh, give thanks to the Lord. Not only is he good, but what? His faithful love does what? His faithful love runs out. His faithful love can't always be found. Is that what the Bible says? No, say it with me. Uh, his faithful love does what? Endures forever. It is enduring forever. That word means that God's love loves his people forever. It's the hased. It's the Hebrew word hased, steadfast, faithful, enduring, never running out type of love. This is an unconditional uh, love of God. In other words, there will never be a limit to God's love where his love will run out for you. There's never a time when God will not love you. There's never a place nor circumstance that God's love will not be found and the best is yet to come because God's love lasts for how long church family? Forever. For eternity. It's God's love. So remember who the Lord is to you. He's good. His faithful love. Second of all, remember this. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Now, if you look through the Psalm 107, many of us as, as a church family, we read through Psalm 107 uh, this week. You look through this uh, chapter, it is filled full of the psalmist recalling and remembering what he has done for his people. He re, he re, he's reminded, God brought his people through the wilderness. Uh, God brought them uh, healing when they were diseased. When they were in a sea about to be shipwrecked, God delivered and calmed the storm. And so he's remembering all the faithful acts of God. Look in verse 43 with me. Verse 43, last verse of the chapter. He says, let whoever is wise pay attention to these things and consider the Lord's acts of faithful love. Very interesting. The word uh, pay attention speaks about a watchman on the wall, always looking out, being alert and being soberly aware. Consider... Uh, speaks about knowing facts and then allowing them to imply to our life. Knowing things so that we can apply them to our life. Look at what God's done and then allow it to sink down into your life. Allow that to go deep uh, within your heart. Now, it's noteworthy that four times through this chapter, there are two phrases that you find repeated four times. So it's highlighted. And notice uh, the first phrase in Psalm 107, verse 6, they were in the wilderness, and they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he rescued them. You'll find also in verse 13, when uh, the people were prisoners, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and what did the Lord do? He rescued them and delivered them out of their distress. In uh, verse number uh, 19, the people were sick. Maybe they had a pandemic and they were, <laughs> and they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And the Lord did what, church family? He rescued them and delivered them out of their distress. They were in the sea and the, the, the waves were coming over the boat and they cried out unto the Lord. And what did the Lord do, church family? He rescued them. He rescued them. Then there's another phrase that we find four times through this chapter. In verse number 8, verse 15, verse 21, and verse 31, he uses this phrase over. He says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love, for his wondrous works for all of humanity. Now, let's take this down to our life. I want you to take just a moment and let's just do what the Bible says to do. Let's 
remember a time that you cried out to the Lord in your trouble and God heard you and rescued you. Can you remember a time? Maybe it was a moment of salvation. <laughs> Maybe it was a moment of relational disconnect and there was conflict and you cried out to the Lord. Maybe in your marriage or your family, you cried out to the Lord and God rescued you. Or maybe it was a financial distress that you were going through and you cried. You didn't know where else to look and you cried out to God and God heard you. So I want to just to take just a moment. I want you to ask you, if you will, just to open up your hands before the Lord. And as you begin to remember, I remember right now what the Lord did for me. I, I was empty. I was searching and I didn't know where to turn to. And I asked the Lord Jesus to save me. <laughs> Right now, just uh, pray out loud. Just where you're at, you don't have to pray with anyone else, but just pray out loud. Give thanks to the Lord for what he's done for you. Yes, Father, today all over this room and all over Cobb County and other places that uh, people are a part of this worship service, God, we're lifting our voices. We want to increase our thanksgiving, expand our capacity of gratitude and give thanks to you. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. How can we cultivate gratitude? First of all, jot this statement down remember the Lord's love the second thing that we could do to cultivate gratitude in our hearts say this out loud with me church family repeating the Lord's love so we want to remember what God's done and then in verse number 7 notice what he's or in verse number 2 Psalm 107 verse 2 let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim maybe your Bible translation says let the redeemed of the Lord speak about it let the redeemed of the Lord say so, uh, that he has redeemed them from the power of the foe. Now, what does it mean to say so or proclaim? What does that mean? It means to communicate. It means to open up your mouth. It means to mention the Lord. Now, understand that uh, if you want to be a vibrant witness for Jesus Christ, it comes out of a grateful heart. Do you realize that people are drawn to you and also drawn to Jesus when you practice gratitude. Nobody wants to be around a grumbling, complaining uh, saint. Nobody wants to be around them. Well, I'll tell you what, that television, that news and politics and all that, you just keep on complaining and you'll, be, uh, you'll, you'll uh, disperse people from around you. Listen to this statement. This is worth coming to church for today or listening to church at least. Uh, let me say this. Instead of cursing the darkness, why don't you try to turn on the light? You say, how, how do you turn on the light? Just be grateful. Just do what God and his word says for us to do. Not grateful in just the times that, uh, that things go well for us, but grateful even in difficult times. You say, well, well, what can we be grateful for? We can be grateful for God's rescuing love. They cried out to the Lord in their distress, and the Lord rescued them. So let me ask you a question. Have, have you been rescued? Uh, let me give you several questions and you'll, we'll read some Bible verses throughout this, uh, this uh, chapter. Look in verse number 9. Uh, he has satisfied the thirsty and filled the hungry with good things. Let me ask you, has the Lord's love satisfied you? Or were you ever just thirsty in your soul, hungry for something more, and God gave you living bread through Jesus Christ? Have you ever been thirsty and God gave you something to drink, a well that will not run dry? Come on now, you can talk to me this morning. Uh, notice in uh, verse number 14, has the Lord brought you out of darkness and gloom and broke the chains apart? Let me ask you a question. Has God's love ever given you hope? <laughs> have you ever been, have you ever been in, in, a, in a moment of mourning and God somehow broke through and brought you uh, gladness and joy? 
as uh, notice verse 20, he sent his word and healed them. He rescued them from the pit. Let me ask you a question. Has God's love ever healed you? Come on now, you can talk to me. We got cancer survivors in the room. We, we've got people today that were broken in their emotions beyond the hope that God's word said God's word went out and brought healing. Notice this uh, next question, verse number 20. He, it's our verse uh, number 29. He stilled the storm to a whisper and the waves uh, or sea were hush. Let me ask you a question. Has God's love ever calmed you? Have you ever just been in a turmoil? We say it down here in Georgia, been in a tizzy. Have you ever just been torn apart, not knowing where to go? Everything's up and down. And Jesus Christ, as you call out to him, he stands on the bow of that ship and he calls those waves to come down at your feet. You ever experienced that? It's what the Bible calls a peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. Notice in verse 35, he turned the desert into a pool. God turned dry land into springs. Has God's love ever refreshed you? <laughs> Let me just go on witness today. I, I'm just about to have a spell uh, teaching you this uh, sermon today. I can remember when I was so dry and thirsty. I can remember as a young person I was searching for meaning and significance. I didn't know myself. I couldn't control myself. I was beyond myself. And then someone pointed me to the living water of Jesus Christ and I drank of him and I have never been thirsty for what I used to long for. Have you ever been refreshed? Ever happened in your life, in your heart? Then uh, notice verse 41. I love this verse. It says that he lifts the needy out of their sufferings and he makes their families multiply their flocks. Let me ask you a question. Has his love ever lifted you? Makes me think about an old song we used to sing. I love the men's quartet. I love being a part of a multi-generational congregation, don't you? I mean, we got Brooke singing last Sunday uh, uh, from our high school ministry, and then we've got our senior saints leaving us today. That's right, Paul, you're a senior saint. Uh, you're singing today and uh, leading us. But I, but I love that old song, Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, even me. Love lifted me, even me. When nothing else could help, God's love lifted me. Can I get a witness this morning? Has anybody been lifted up by God's love and by God's grace? Now, I want us to take a moment and actually experience this scripture. And uh, I want to ask you to do this Bible verse. You'll see it up on the screen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So I'm going to ask you, if you will, to stand to your feet. And if you've got somebody with you, I want you to turn and speak to them. Now, if you live together, you're sitting together, so you can do that. If you're at home, somebody's in the room, I want you to talk. If there's, there's nobody with you, just turn across the aisle and wave at somebody, okay? Or turn across the way or either write something down that you'll share later. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to remember the Lord's faithful love providing for a need in your life and then tell about it. Just repeat what God's faithful love has done in your life. I remember God's faithful love to me was evident when our family was going through a move and it was very difficult and God provided for us by giving a supernatural peace and a supernatural provision. So I'm just saying, let the redeemed of the Lord say so today. So turn to that person uh, that you're with. And if you're not, write it down. Write that statement down before the Lord. We're going to take two minutes to do this. Let each one share. Men, you go first. If you're in that circle, you go first. Parents, you go first. <clears throat>
got one more minute. Make sure both or several in your group have been able to share. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. After your, your group has finished, go ahead and sit down if, if you're completed sharing your testimony. All right, can we give the Lord a big hand today? A lot of, lot of worship, a lot of praise going out. Praise God for what he's doing. Now let me give you a challenge to go this Thanksgiving. I want to challenge you to grow deeper this Thanksgiving by uh, as you gather uh, for a time, whatever time that is, whether it's virtually or in person, however you do that, remember the Lord's love. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, whoever's in charge of the meal or the gathering, just simply say, we'd like to have three, share three blessings, three ways that God's blessed us. Uh, uh, go around the table and say, I'll start us off. And just name three blessings that you're grateful for this past year and allow every person at your table, young and old allow every person to share three blessings okay and then here's another challenge are you ready for this challenge say I'm ready yeah I'm not sure if you're ready are you ready ready okay all right here's your challenge open up your mouth and share what Jesus's love has done for you you know one thing that we all desire and want we all want our children and we all want our grandchildren we all want them to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the faith. Can I get a witness? You know how that happens? It's simply by Psalm 107 verse 2. Open up our mouth and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Just speak about God's love for you. Talk about, tell your testimony. Share God's love in your life. Share how Christ has changed you. Share how God has made you a new person by the power of of the Lord Jesus. Now let me ask every person in the spirit of 2 Corinthians 13 5 to do this. I want you to remember when you turn from your sin and you trust Jesus Christ. Can you remember that? Can you remember that moment, that day? Uh, I led a, a young doctor to Christ recently and as he prayed to receive Christ in life he said, I, I have such peace. I have such peace in my life. You, can you remember a time where you turned from your sin? The Bible says, examine yourself and see if you're in the faith. If you can remember that time, just give thanks to God. Just let your heart get glad right now. It's all right to smile. Just get glad. Just, just rejoice and thank the Lord for that. But you may be here today and you say, you know, Pastor, I can't remember a time. I, ca I can't remember that time. Can I invite you today to be born again? You say, well, what are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about not a physical birth, but a spiritual birth. Jesus said that you must be born again. You want heaven? You, you want to go to heaven one day? Well, first of all, heaven has to come inside of you. You say, how does that happen? It happens through God's love that was manifested through His Son, living a perfect life that no one could ever live, dying a perfect death that no one ever did, rising again on the third day and the Bible says that when you turn from your sin and you place your faith in Jesus Christ the Bible says something happens <laughs> a new birth happens and if you have never been born again can I encourage you uh, today to simply cry out to the Lord just simply lift your heart before God say God save me I need you I believe that Jesus died for my sin. I believe that he rose again. God, save me. Just pray that prayer. God, save me. And as you pray that prayer, you can be sure, according to the integrity of God's word, God says that everyone, no matter how old, no matter how young, 
everyone, doesn't matter your culture, doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter your economy. The Bible says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, forgiven, made a brand new life. Now, you'll notice up on uh, the screen that there is a number uh, that's there. If you'll just uh, text that number, the word next, and say, Pastor, I uh, I, I'm, I'm, since God is calling me to himself I'm opening my heart to him just type that word next uh, we have pastors that would love to be in contact with you so that we could support you as you would take that next step of following Jesus if you're in the room you could do that or if you're at home you could do that and if you're at, on campus today uh, there will be a pastor right out by the next step area right in our foyer here and we would love to uh, talk with you, pray with you, and encourage you. Uh, next Sunday, we'll be celebrating Believer's Baptism. And uh, maybe you've accepted Christ, but never taken that next step of uh, following Jesus in baptism. We'd love to celebrate with you and uh, love to baptize you and celebrate that new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are others that you would say, you know, Pastor, I'm, I'm coming here to Roswell Street. You can say, tell me about this uh, church family. This church family is made up of a lot of generations, and we're made up of a lot of different cultures. But we're one family living the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you'd like to be a part of this church family, we would welcome you. All you need to do is text that same uh, number and type the word next or either stop by the next step area out there. Now, what I want to ask at this time, I'm going to invite you, if you will, to stand with me. And I want to pray a blessing over you because I've given you a challenge and outside of the Holy Spirit's help, it'll never ha happen. And we don't have any ability to do it. But I want to pray for every family that is listening right now that God would allow us to do Psalm 107, verse 2. Father, I want to pray today that every man and woman, I want to pray for every young person that you would allow us as your redeemed people to open up our mouth and tell what your love has done for us. I pray, God, that you would give courage. I pray, God, that you would give boldness. I pray, Father, maybe there's a young person that they're the only Christ follower in their family. I pray around that dinner table or over a phone conversation that you would let them tell what great things you've done. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said.